Hello, this is Keith speaking here and it's really nice to have an opportunity to be able to spend some time with you now on a very important subject of stopping self-punishment. You can take this in in a nice relaxing state of meditation just by simply closing your eyes and relaxing each part of your body and then if you have uh, an iPod with speakers or headphones well then of course you can use your remote to stop and start. I want to talk with you on this CD about a subject of intense fascination for the bulk of us in the human family. All of us have a propensity for punishing ourselves. We do it through a variety of addictions to food, drugs, alcohol, prescription medication, gambling, smoking, spending beyond the budget, television, and other addictive and destructive patterns of behaviour, such as self-pity, low self-esteem, bad self-image, lack of self-control, anger in speech, or worse still, suppressed anger, which expresses itself as guilt and can turn into cancer. Why are we so masochistic and seem to seek out and become attached to our addictive patterns of behaviour that seem beyond our control? We are living through a testing period for the whole of the human family. As education spread and intelligence and consciousness expanded since 1950 around the time of the formation of the United Nations, so the awareness of humanity expanded. This period is designed to stimulate the consciousness of the human family as we move into a cycle of testing. That's what initiation is, a testing period. These extra energies stimulate all that is within us in the form of negative emotions such as fear, anxiety, stress, anger, shame, guilt, self-pity, bad self-image and low self-esteem. Our addictions are designed by us as a device, method or medium whereby we can begin to punish ourselves. We're told as children that we are bad, naughty and must be punished. It comes to us from the religions of the world, which all teach about an angry God, a punishing God, a vengeful God. This was designed as a way of influencing your behaviour through fear. We are fast outgrowing our addictions to the past and our desire to punish ourselves through our addictive patterns of behaviour. It's easy to also use the validation that you get from others as a source of your self-esteem. All of us have a range of needs in life starting with survival needs, security needs, the desire to be loved and needed, the desire to know others and to be known. Intimacy and caring come as a result of all that fulfilment of needs. Some very important needs, however, are our esteeming needs. It's easy to fall into the trap of using the validation of others as a source of your self-esteem. That type of self-esteem is not lasting. Lasting self-esteem comes from your own internal resources. These are your principles and values, such as honesty, integrity, maturity, self-control, trust, responsibility, giving, loving, caring, sharing, kindness, tolerance, patience, idealism, etc. It's important to appreciate that self-esteem gained from your own internal resources are lasting. No one can give it to you and no one can take it away. It's easy to get caught in the trap of experiencing the ever-present threat of pain being inflicted from others that you turn away from your own integrity and values as your source of self-esteem 
and turn to outside validation. This leads inevitably to a web of addictions to excesses. Addictions to patterns of behaviour that become repetitive and that are designed subconsciously to produce pain. Self-inflicted pain as a way of avoiding pain inflicted by specific intimates. This is a wonderful space-time rule set that God and Goddess have created for us here on Earth and we've been given the power to create all of the events of our lives. We've also been given the power to mould and shape those events according to our raw materials. These are our attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, feelings, decisions and our choices. We mould and shape them with our tools. Everyone has the same three tools. These are desire, imagination and expectancy. We've been given also the power of self-conscious choice or what is currently known as free will. If however we don't make conscious choices because of not wanting to take responsibility, we give that power away to our subconscious mind. It can only create our events in life in accordance with our predominant patterns of desire, imagination and expectancy. If you are addicted to excesses and emotional or mental addictions of self-pity, anger, shame, fear, conflict and tension, then you can expect a whole series of events in your life that represent a reflection of your desire, imagination and expectation. It's important for all of us to realise very, very clearly that every single event in your life originates from an emotion or from a thought. Every event is an expression of a thought form. It's up to each of us to bend every effort of the will to reach and stretch to become more of who we really are. As we learn more about the nature of reality and our place in that reality, which information and knowledge is available, we learn to transform our nature through a process called processing. Processing is a process of refining the emotional and mental belief patterns which are the basis of the expectancy of pain in your reality. Self-punishment is designed as a way to avoid pain inflicted by significant others. Your excesses that do become addictive are not for pleasure, such as alcohol or drugs or overindulgence in food or whatever. They are designed to avoid pain. The internal mechanisms inside yourself are designed to inflict pain on self, the effect being don't bother me now with that infliction of pain from your biting criticism of my patterns of behaviour. I'm already in pain, so leave me alone. You'll get to a stage in life, however, where the pain inflicted on self to avoid pain from others becomes intolerable. In that chaos and crisis of tragedy and pain, you turn to the choice of expansion of consciousness through an intake of knowledge. We are all spiritual beings. Never forget that basic truth about who we are and why we exist. There are basically two worlds out there. The first is a reality filled with darkness, foreboding and the inevitability of pain. The second is a reality filled with love, wonder, awe, magic, miracles, beauty and joy. 
When you are weighted down with your addictive patterns of behaviour, you tether yourself into a world of pain. If it's difficult for you to give up your patterns of behaviour, try to make your motivation the ending of the pain because it is imperative for your growth. When you begin growing and reaching and stretching to become more conscious and aware of who you really are, you start to learn about your blockages as individuals and as human beings. Three of the main blockages that afflict all of us in the human family are A. A refusal to feel your emotions, perhaps blocked by the stupor of alcohol or drugs. B. A refusal to allow love in. It's like a total denial of love. C. The third one is self-pity. Relatively early in life you're able to recognise your blockages and you work diligently to transcend them. You start to grow, reach and stretch again. You're not where you were five years ago. You've had lots of changes within yourself. Every one of us has over 80% of our waking consciousness polarised upon introspection and reflection. That's what we are designed for as spiritual beings, to introspect our way out of chaos, fear, anxiety and pain, so that we can focus upon our spiritual heritage and our spiritual growth. The obstacles that stand in your way as you become more conscious and aware of yourself as a consciousness, not as a body but a mind and a field of emotions, with reasoning power, become more intricate and complex. It's not just about survival or financial security or communications in the job or in relationships. It's about our sense of who we are and how much we are adhering to our principles and values. What is our level of self-esteem and what is the source of that self-esteem? Is it from an internal appraisal of self and our character or is it from outside validation by significant others? Are we stuck in the past and who we have been and what we have done? Or are we focused upon where we are heading and who we are becoming? Ending self-punishment is about ending the blockages. The focus must be upon your personal growth. That's the whole purpose of life and the objective for which the space-time rule set was created. It's our field of play to allow for personal growth and the expansion of our consciousness and awareness. That's what this dialogue is for, to help you to understand and appreciate that we have been given the gift of eternal life, that we can take as many lifetimes as we need to reach perfection at the human level. The first step in ending self-punishment is developing an awareness of why you do it in the first place. Ask yourself the question, why do I punish myself? The first reason is that you've been taught by parents, teachers, by religion, that you are bad and deserve to be punished. You are taught when you are wrong that you deserve to be punished that when you fail, you deserve to be punished. Parents don't elaborate or clarify why your actions are regarded as bad or wrong, or that you have failed. You never question them about why, on top of having to deal with the failure, that you must also be punished. 
it's expedient to just call you bad and that you need to be punished. From religion you learn about God as a punishing God who must be feared. You are taught that you are born in sin, that you are sinners, that sinning is bad and that you must fear the punishment of the Lord. It is an angry and vengeful God that you are taught about from your religious teachers. This was all designed to control your behaviour through fear of punishment. You therefore learn as children to punish yourself to avoid the punishment of others. You therefore take these habit patterns into your adolescence and on into your adulthood. What I'm talking about here are the set of raw materials that you are building into your subconscious mind as attitudes, beliefs, thoughts and feelings as you progress through your childhood, adolescence and on into your adulthood. These beliefs are hot-wired into your subconscious mind. Then when you don't want to take responsibility for your shortcomings, mistakes, lack of adherence to principles and values, you fall back upon habit patterns that represent your addictions. It can be to alcohol, overeating, gambling, drugs, self-pity, shame, low self-esteem, martyrhood, domination, control and manipulations. It's all designed to escape being responsible and to avoid adherence to your integrity, trust, intimacy, caring, loyalty, fairness, honesty and responsibility. Another reason that you punish yourself is based upon your inherent need to feel. It's part of the human condition that you want to feel the full range of your emotions. But society basically says in so many different ways that you're not supposed to feel. Society says whatever you do in life, don't express your feelings. It's a waste of energy and will only lead to trouble. It, society, goes on to say, if you must express your emotions, for God's sake, do it in private. Then when you're finished, hurry back to take your controlled place in society. Men especially are taught from all quarters of society, education, religion, employment, social life, family, etc., not to show your feelings, that it's not okay for men to cry, worry, or show fear, stiff up a lip, and a variety of other cliches. If you must show your feelings, we are all taught, then show your happy feelings, joy, humour, affection, laughter, intimacy, caring, etc. But don't do it for long, or it'll be seen as a sign of weakness and vulnerability. But our natural inclination is to feel. You want to express your emotions, but society says no. So the only course of action that's left is for you to feel pain. Rather than have that pain inflicted from significant others, you inflict it upon yourself through your addictive behaviours. If you are experiencing pain of any description, emotional or physical, chances are that is punishment of self. If you are experiencing crises and tragedy, struggle, hardship, worry and stress, it's a good chance that your emotions are based in fear. You do have a choice, however, about which way that you direct the energies of your mind. 
If you learn how to process your emotions, you'll learn how to redirect the energies of your mind to the feelings based in love. Not an easy task if you've taken decades to establish those patterns of emotions. You are an emotional being and that's the whole basis of this CD is to draw your attention to the direction of energy from your mind. Willpower develops every time that you make a choice based on love, self-esteem, living by your principles and values. Self-punishment is simply a pattern of emotions or a cluster of patterns of behaviour that are based in fear. Once you are aware of the nature of the reality that you find yourself conscious in, you can begin to work more diligently at your own personal growth. Spiritual growth is the only game in town. You'll gradually tire of any patterns of emotions that are based on fear. You'll understand and begin to perceive yourself more and more as a consciousness. As you expand your understanding about how God's laws can be utilized to your own advantage in terms of the events that you encounter every day, you'll grow in motivation for turning events around to your own advantage. This is achieved through bringing the mind and the emotions under control and directing your thoughts toward thoughts and feelings based on love. Self-punishment is a way for you to express your feelings to know that you're alive. It's like saying to your reality, pinch me so that I know that I'm real and that I'm alive. You're saying to your reality, inflict pain on me so that I know that I'm alive. If you can't find someone else to inflict pain upon you, you turn to self-punishment. It's time to start seeing yourself as a spiritual being with the gift of eternal life from a loving God and Goddess. What a wonderful gift that all of us have been given. The religions told you that you only have one life because it gives them greater control over your behaviour and your money. This life experience covers a whole range of experiences, but our consciousness is focused upon our emotions and our mind. So all of us are emotional and mental beings and living within a metaphysical space-time rule set that brings us the reflection of our emotions and thoughts in the form of events. What we'll do now is to analyse the four steps of processing a little more closely. Recognition is to open up to view, to discuss with a confidant or within yourself. The second step is to acknowledge. It means to own your own habit patterns of emotions. If you want to sell a property, you must have the deeds. Deeds are proof of ownership. If you own something, you can do something with it. You can keep it up, the habit pattern of self-punishment, or you can decide to let it go. This second step of acknowledging means to admit to your patterns of behaviour and also own the impact that those patterns have on others, including your loved ones. To own your manipulations, to own your domination, to own your control. Get back to giving, loving, caring and sharing. When you own your manipulations, your negative patterns of behaviour, your addictions to excesses, 
it's easy to reason that you need to be punished. You do have a choice, however. You can choose, you can decide to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the negative impact that your addictions have had upon yourself and upon others. Others who are your loved ones. Once you've forgiven yourself, you can then move on to the fourth step of processing, and that is to change that behavior. Realize that you do have impact. If that impact is painful, then that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. We all do it. It's part of the human condition. You can be forgiven and you can forgive yourself. When I speak of addictions, I'm not just talking about gambling, drinking, eating to excess, drugs, including prescription drugs. I'm speaking about emotional patterns of behavior such as fear, anxiety, doubt, insecurity, guilt, anger, shame, envy, greed. These are all part of the human condition, but it can be changed. If we understand enough about reincarnation and the metaphysical sciences of initiation, processing and programming, we'll be motivated to change. Change comes with understanding. Self-punishment will end when we understand and master the science of processing. That's your task as a human being. That's why you are in life. You are in life to become more of who you really are. The real you is filled with love, tenderness, kindness, forgiveness, sympathy, tolerance, patience, trust, and responsibility. You are expanding your consciousness and your awareness through each life that you have lived. It's the part of wisdom to choose to go with the flow and the direction of the life currents. The life currents are all heading toward growth and expansion. Expansion of your intelligence, expansion of your awareness, and expansion of your consciousness. Understanding is your saviour. It's your saving force. Developing understanding about God's laws and the laws of the Goddess. She wants for you what you want for you. Nothing more, nothing less. Processing is the way whereby we direct the mind toward our positive thoughts and feelings and away from the negative and destructive ones. You go on punishing yourself or finding significant others to punish you because you don't know how to process and you don't know how to forgive. Well, how do you forgive yourself, you may ask? Well, to take an example, imagine a friend comes to see you seeking your forgiveness. You obviously recognize the nature of the patterns of behavior which sponsored the asking for forgiveness. You can see that he or she has acknowledged or owned the impact that they had upon you. You have a sense of safety that it won't happen again. You recognize and acknowledge you feel that the problem can be fixed and taken care of, and as a result, you forgive them. Well, that's exactly how you forgive yourself. And so we'll end this track here, so I suggest that you now take a little bit of a break and reflect upon the things that you've learnt from this track, and then we'll move on to the next track for you.